I want to introduce to you uh, what might be new to some of you, and some of you may have seen this. This is, in here is my Mako model. This is uh, one of my more popular blades. It's a, it's a handy EDC fixed blade. And this blade has uh, been a popular model for me. But what I want to do uh, today is give you the opportunity to get first crack at a new set of steels that I'm doing. Now, most of my claim to fame is the Rex 121, super hard, super high edge holding, cool steel, fun, but not stainless, not even kind of stainless. This uh, trifecta, I'll call it, of stainless steels is highly stainless, and in some cases, almost stain proof. Okay, folks, I wanna tell you, about the three stainless steels we're using here. But first, let's talk about the PG series. Uh, this is precision ground. So I just can't keep up with demand on the blades that I'm making. So uh, the most time consuming piece is hand grinding the primary bevel. And so these I send out to have precision ground uh, primary bevels. This is of course my Mako model and it really helps speed things along. A couple design things here. This picture is actually pretty good to show you uh, that the the steel is just slightly larger than the scales so that it's easy to line up the scales if you want to take them off, clean it up, uh, and it just, it just makes life a good bit easier for you. Uh, another thing that will make life easier for you is these screws are 82 degree flathead screws with standard, it's, I think it's a 332nd drive. So if you would happen to lose the screw or something or loosened it or whatever, you can just buy one of these screws. They're quarter inch uh, depth. It just makes life a lot easier. You have the, the other thing about the design of the Mako that's sort of been evolutionary as well. You have this lanyard hole and you have this cutout to accommodate the lanyard itself. So it's not sticking out much above the surface of the blade steel. Uh, so this is the PG Mako. This is an actual PG Mako that you're looking at. The thickness of the spine is between 105 and 110. And this is the sheath. This is what makes the deal here, guys. This is an in-the-pocket sheath, which allows this small fixed blade to be carried uh, like you would carry a folder. On the reverse side here, you can see it has this ulti clip that clips onto your jeans. So your jeans would be, you know, or pants or whatever you're wearing, would be right about here. So there's not a ton of blades sticking up out of there. You can wear that to the office, to the restaurant, uh, on your wedding day, whatever you like. Uh, definitely on your wedding day, though. Uh, I'm not afraid of machine marks because these are made with machines. I use machines. And so uh, we, we touch this up with a Scotch-Brite uh, belt so it helps close the pores from the grinding. Although it won't matter too much on these steels because they're so corrosion resistant, but we'll still do it. It just kind of finishes off the look. Let's talk about this trifecta of steels. We have MagnaCut, Vanex, and N360. MagnaCut's brand new. Brand new. Uh, its creator is a fellow named Laren Thomas. He's with uh, Knife Steel Nerds. And uh, a lot of the data that I'm using with the Cut tests and the toughness were done by those guys. He does great work over there and uh, really has been an addition to the knife community. And he came up with MagnaCut. And honestly, it's just a better mousetrap of a steel. And uh, one of his secret weapons here is this niobium, uh, which helps with grain structure, helps which then helps with toughness, and then also can even help with uh, corrosion resistance rather than using vanadium. So it is a great uh, great addition to the steel. The, it, there's a fair amount of vanadium in that steel as well as Vanex. Now the other secret ingredient, it's not secret, but is, uh, is nitrogen, which is super hard to get into. It's a light gas. It's very difficult to infuse that into a steel matrix. And there are ways they do it. There are only certain facilities that can do it. They can get about this amount in. CPM can do that in their process. But these higher amounts, like the N360 has in the Vanex, that's a special, special um, facilities to be able to do that. And uh, a lot of them are over in Europe. So both, both of those steels are smelted in Europe. And uh, they took the slow boat from Europe to get here. 
Actually, it was air, but it seemed like it was a slow boat because it took forever. Let's talk a little bit about knife steel attributes and what people are really into. People are really into, I know I wasn't, especially when I first started in this hobby, um, corro uh, not corrosion resistance, uh, edge retention. And of course, I chased after the highest edge retaining steel on the planet. There are things with higher edge holding, but they are not steels. This is the highest edge retain, uh, retaining steel on the market. And this is usually how we see the pecking order of steels. But unfortunately with that, there are a lot of other attributes like toughness and corrosion resistance that get kind of ignored at times. So this is the same chart, uh, sort of the same way, but now there's these other attributes on top of it that you can see. So now let's sort it for for uh, t t t this one sorted by toughness, right? So the least tough steel, <laughs> there is an inverse relationship between toughness and edge holding, generally speaking. Uh, and then your uh, highest toughness, which is a very low edge holding steels uh, and everything in between. So edge holding and toughness usually come at the cost of one another. Now, if we just looked at corrosion resistance, uh, you'll see that uh, of the four top corrosion resisting steels, three of them are the steels that we're talking about today. So this is a great knife if you're somebody who is bad at caring for your knife uh, in terms of leaving it out or cutting things and not cleaning it, or if you're somebody who's working in salt water a lot, uh, the handle material is G10, which is very resistant to chemicals and various other things. So this knife is made to be used. My, I want you to use my knives. Uh, I want you to cut with them. I want you to learn the performance of the steel with them and kind of become familiar why you would pay a little extra for some of these steels. So um, corrosion resistance is really what this little batch of uh, Kickstarter is about. My last Kickstarter was about edge retention with Rex 121. This Kickstarter is about corrosion resistance, but even more so balance balanced steel that do everything fairly well. Here is an interesting chart where it is sorted by the top score when you add all three of the attributes together. And you can see what's at the top. LC200N, Vanex not far behind, MagnaCut, all in the top like 20% here uh, because they're well balanced. They do all things well. Now, just for fun, I did another chart. And in this chart, it's sorted, but it's ignoring the corrosion resistance. So uh, the edge holding and the toughness are actually results of testing that was done, uh, data from testing that I saw. Corrosion resistance is a little more of a subjective one. Uh, I couldn't find a source for it. So I'm looking at their chemical makeups. I'm looking at testing that other people have done. So corrosion resistance, a little more willy-nilly, a little more subjective. But this chart is sorted excluding them, and it's only toughness. And it's funny, 3V and uh, comes out on top because it has a fair amount of edge holding, fair amount of a lot of toughness. Rex comes out high because it just has ridiculous amount of edge holding and very little toughness, but it didn't need it with all the edge holding. So that that gives you a sense. That's just a fun exercise. I don't know. We have to study that all day. But I am excited for these blades. I'm excited for this Kickstarter. I hope you can join in. It's really expensive ordering all the steel, getting it cut. Uh, in order to have this PG series, there's a minimum of blades I need to grind, have ground at a time. And uh, it's not a small number. So uh, this is your chance to be first in line to play with steels that are hard to get. There are very few knives at this price point that have Vanex, especially Vanex. Magna cuts really hard to get, especially in you know a moderately priced knife. And LC200N, you can almost only get that in like Spyderco's Salt series. So very cool steels, hard to get other places. And I just would love to join you to join with us as we kickstart these three steels and get them out into the knife community. Thanks for tuning in.